video is sponsored by Squarespace. How's it going guys? Vincent here from thecreativedojo.net. Welcome to another video quick tip. Today in this video, I want to share with you guys how I created these nice symmetrical complex looking mathematical shapes right within After Effects using a little bit of expressions and a little bit of math. Um, so I know a lot of you guys out there aren't exactly huge um, expression buffs. Um, you know, you don't want to think about calculus and arc tangents and stuff like that. So luckily I created a really cool preset they can actually use to create these shapes very, very easily and to get around very easily without knowing any of the math and stuff like that. But I do kind of want to break down, you know, how it works so that you can kind of apply it to your other works and explore other functions and mathematical algorithms. But basically, we won't be using any third party effects, no third party plugins, strictly After Effects. And um, so we're going to be using a technique or kind of an, a mathematical algorithm called spirographs. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are already familiar with kind of spire graphs at a very young age. Basically, you know, when you kind of trace a circle with a pen pivoted to a string of some sort, and that's pivoting something else, you can kind of create this nice um, symmetrical shapes. Um, a lot of kind of drawing books kind of have these activities um, for, for kids and stuff like that. But basically the whole idea is you have this parametric equation for a circle right here that you probably learn in your pre-calculus or calculus class. Basically, um, these two equations give you the X and Y coordinates to basically create a circle if you just play around with the theta value, right? So I know, I know, um, uh, but so this article kind of explains it pretty well here. So basically these two equations give you the point to draw a circle basically. So that's, that's pretty cool. So what happens if you add another circle to the mix, right? So using this formula, we can calculate the, you know, the circumference point of a large circle. And by modifying the equation a little bit, we can add a second circle. And so once we calculate the, the, you know, the exact coordinates of a larger circle, we can use that point as a pivot point for our second circle. So this is what this is here. So we have the overall large circle and we're using that point, a point on that larger circle to draw another circle, as you see here. And we're just playing around with the theta value right here to kind of, you know, increase it sequentially. Uh, but this can be driven by time, can be driven by whatever. Um, and so basically, you know, you have this. So you have a circle that's being traced and another circle that's being traced along with it. And, you know, right now the, th the theta value in the second smaller circle is staying static, right? You know, we're changing the theta value and, you know, things are moving, but you're still creating, you know, a larger circle. So this is kind of boring. Um, so what we can do is we can actually modify or add a, you know, a modifier to the theta of the smaller circle. And when you do that, you actually get very, very interesting designs here. So something like this. So essentially, you know, you're still following the larger overall circle, right? But r rather than the smaller circle being fixed, you know, we're modifying that theta. So that theta, that angulation of the smaller circle is actually rotating as well. So basically you're kind of like rotating while orbiting at the same time. And if you play around with the theta, you can actually get some pretty interesting designs here. So um, this Mason.net article right here, um, pretty much wrote this whole code in JavaScript, which doesn't 100% translate to After Effects 100%, um, but with a few tweaks, uh, you can actually do this in After Effects um, using some of, some of the same code right here. And this now this only works in After Effects CC 2018. And the reason why is because, you know, previously in other versions, we didn't have access to the exact vertex point data of paths. But since After Effects CC 2018, we now have access to something called the path property, which allows us to access individual vertex points of the path. We can draw a path using expressions. We can access all that data and all that path data and drive everything using expressions as well as scripting. So this is um, AE enhancers or, uh, you know, um, this is a huge, huge resource for all things After Effects expression, as well as extend script and scripting in general and all that stuff. But basically, um, we're going to be using a property here, um, right here called path property. So we'll, we'll select a property and we'll create a path. And, you know, we're, we're going to use the algorithm basically to define all these points. We're going to skip tangents because um, it's kind of a pain in the butt to formulate. And then, you know, we have this is closed true property. And, you know, I'll link this in the description down below. So we won't create everything from scratch, but I kind of do want to walk you through how it's works so that you can kind of set it up and learn expressions at the same time. Um, so the only downside to this whole thing is that it's a little bit slow. Um, it is intensive still, even with the new JavaScript engine. So basically I have this white background here. 
the first thing you need to do is you're going to need to um, create a new shape layer. And I'm just going to call it Spirograph. And then once you install the preset um, into your effects and presets, I'm going to search it up called Spirograph. Under Creative Dojo, we'll apply that to our shape layer. And right off the bat, you should see a shape layer with a new Spirograph pseudo effect applied to it with all of our controls. And if you hit UU on the keyboard, you're going to see that we have the path that it generated, um, a round corners effects, as well as a stroke effect. And this is just the bare bones basic of kind of how I created this. So let's go ahead and take a look at the path property here. Um, this is where the algorithm comes into place here. So all this stuff here from line, basically line, line nine and above, it's just linking this path to some of the controllers I have for the pseudo effect here. So kind of just ignore all of this. So basically I'm creating an empty array to hold all of our points that we're gonna generate. I'm doing a for loop right here. And you know, I'm saying theta starts at zero with a little modifier in our controller here, so ignore that. And when theta is less or e less than or equal to uh, two pi, which you remember is a full circle, then we're gonna, in we're gonna increment it um, by some small value here. And every time we do that, we're gonna generate an X and Y coordinate. And we're gonna push that X, Y coordinate into our array. So basically, um, you know, we're creating a for loop to create all of our points, right? We're, we're creating a for loop for all of our points. We're pushing all those points into our array. And then finally, we're gonna use that create path function new to After Effects CC 2018. Um, so you will need After Effects CC 2018 or higher to use a preset as well as use this expression. We're gonna select our path, create a path, give it all of our points. So this is our all points array. I leave these blank arrays for the tangents because I don't wanna you know, calculate the tangents for the Bezier and all that stuff. If you guys wanna do that, or you guys want to have a, a better solution to do that, let me know. Um, you know, I kind of cheated out on this and we have this closed path variable, which is true or false, depending on, you know, what you select here. Um, but basically this is the whole idea of it. Now it is very important to note that for theta right here, we are incrementing by one over quality. Now quality is just a variable. So, so essentially um, the smaller this whole value is, uh, the more qual the more points you have, the, the increment is smaller, so it'll take longer to finish the for loop. And so um, you'll be generating a lot more points, basically. So um, I did one over quality so that when you, so that you know, it's more intuitive to increase the resolution right here. Um, it will actually take longer to render, but it'll generate more points. So basically that is how you created it. Um, so um, basically without providing any tangents, things would look very, very square and boxy and there'd be no smoothing. So kind of a hack that I did was I added a round, round corners effect and just kind of smooth everything out like that. It's kind of a hack, um, but it is faster to calculate, I believe. And um, it's good enough for me for what I had to do for my project. And then we have a stroke color, um, just a normal shape stroke applied to the effect, all linked to the spirograph effect. So no more geeky talk. This is pretty much how you do it here. Um, you're you're, you're um, defining a center point X, center point Y, the outer radius, the inner radius, which is the smaller radius, the ratio, which is basically the modifier um, of the theta, the quality, which is the resolution, uh, the angle offset, and the closed path Boolean, which means um, is this shape layer a closed shape or an open shape layer? Um, and so let's go ahead and explore some of the presets here. So. Again, this is the position offset. We can offset, you know, the whole spirograph if you wanted to. Um, you have the inner and outer radius, which you can expand the, you know, the larger circle, the smaller circle. So remember, this is basically the first larger circle here. So as you can see, just by playing around with that, you can get some pretty interesting designs. And um, it's not rendering too slow right now because we kind of have the quality set to pretty low. So you know, you have something like this. This is the inner radius or the inner circle, right? So as you can see, if I um, decrease that, the actual, you know, the actual circle gets smaller here. But if I increase it, you get some pretty interesting designs. Um, and this is the ratio. This is the theta modifier. So where are you in that smaller circle? So 
We can increase it and get some pretty interesting shapes. As you can see, so a lot of cool symmetrical designs. You can use it for VJ loops. You can use it to create abstract designs, whatnot. Um, the angle defines kind of the angle offset here. So you can actually use this to kind of animate, um, animate uh, the kind of animation on and off. Um, just kind of quick way to kind of just draw it on. This is basically modifying the for loop and where you kind of are. Um, and then of course the rounding parameter, if you set it to zero, um, this is no rounding. And then if we set it to like, let's say 40, you know, you're gonna get a really nice rounded shape. And you're starting to see kind of the slowness of this because this is a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of churning right here. Close path, you can see that if I uncheck it, um, it kind of just starts and it just ends wherever it ends. It doesn't connect to the very beginning. But if you enable it, it's going to connect to the very beginning. Uh, and here you have some stroke parameters now. So you can change the stroke size to like five and get a thicker stroke. Um, you can change the color to, you know, whatever color you want. Um, but this this is the primitive spire graph um, that I created using expressions. Now, the reason why it takes so long to render, and I, I want you guys to understand this, um, because this is kind of a core uh, problem with expressions, or not problem, but downside of expressions, is that um, basically, so unlike plugins, expressions evaluate at every single frame. So every single frame of your project, After Effects is calculating all this. So it's going through the for loop every single frame. So it is pretty heavy. So, you know, if you're only creating this shape statically and you don't need, you know, you don't need to calculate you know, the, the new path every single frame, like as if, as if you're animating it, then I would actually bake this whole expression. So let's say I'm happy with this. You know, you can right click um, and you can go to keyframe resistant and do convert expression to keyframe just for the, the shape path. That will, you know, pretty much bake your whole expression into keyframes, which is a lot more manageable and it won't slow down your computer as much. So right now it's, it's a lot faster. You can move around, you can navigate, and you know, obviously the controls won't work anymore because you bake the path. Um, but stuff like stroke, color, and size will work. I'm gonna undo that for now. I do wanna talk about quality here, or the resolution. So 20, 20 is kind of like an average number here. So if I crank it up to, let's say um, 25, you can see that I got a different design, but I also got a lot more detail. Um, so basically um, that value is decreasing the step of the for loop. So you're gonna be generating a lot more points, a lot more data here. So if I do, let's say like 35, you know, you're getting a lot more data um, and it will also slow it down. So let's just say 300, 150, and let's do like a ratio of like 40 and change rounding down to like 30 and angle to zero. And you can really get some interesting designs here, but I do wanna caution you on changing the uh, the quality too much because you can get pretty laggy to the point where your interface will kind of crash. So let's see, so if it's set the resolution down to like one, you're gonna see that I have very, very primitive, barely any points. 10, you're gonna see that I have a lot, a lot more detail and 30, I have even more detail. Um, I would stay around the 20, the 30, the 40, depending on, you know, how fast your computer is. Um, you know, 50, you're starting to get pretty close to breaking point and it will slow down your whole entire, you know, you know user interface. I mean, you won't be able to navigate anything. Um, so once you're happy with the design, bake it. And the cool part about this, and as you can see, you know, it's already starting to kind of like freeze on me here. And I didn't really change anything at all. So, you know, that that took a little, a lot of resources to recalculate. So um, I'm gonna turn the, the resolution down back to, let's just say, um, you know, 15 for now. So because this is a shape layer, again, um, you can pretty much add any modifier you want. So we already use the round corners as well as the stroke, but you know, let's say you wanted to add a fill to this, you know, you could do that. Um, and then you can play around with the blending modes, you can, you know, change it to like a black fill. Uh, you can add, so instead of, uh, in the original demonstration, I actually used a, uh, a gradient stroke instead. 
but you can use a fill. You can, you know, do like a soft light or something and, you know, you know, play around with it. You can add a fill. Um, if this is too perfect for you and you want to add some variation, you can always do like a, I don't know, like a offset path or even a twist here. So if you get a twist property, you can actually, you know, twist this thing and create your own stuff. So basically everything that you can do with shape layers, you can actually do um, with this whole spider graph thing to kind of add your own variation to it, trim path if you wanted to, wiggle path, if you kind of want to distort the whole thing, you know, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, this is basically the idea on how to create a spiral graph. Like I said before, there are other ways to create mathematical geometry looking shapes within, within After Effects, as well as using math and JavaScript. So I would highly recommend looking up, you know, like mathematical JavaScript graphics and stuff like that, and just kind of trying to translate it into After Effects. Because now that we have the path property accessible, uh, we can do a lot more to, you know, create some pretty interesting symmetrical designs, mathematical designs that just, you know, quite frankly, isn't possible um, using just, you know, your, the pen tool. Before I go, I want to give a quick thanks to our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only one platform to create an amazing website, whether it's for your store, online business, or portfolio. They have amazing, beautifully crafted themes to choose from, designed by professionals. You can customize everything you want about it without having any coding knowledge required. They have awesome 24-hour support. And best of all, you can actually save 10% off your order by using the promo code DOJO at checkout over at squarespace.com slash dojo. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. So this is just one way to create some nice abstract shapes using mathematics and expressions in After Effects. Hopefully y'all can explore other different methods as well as kind of add your own twist to this expression. So this spiral graph preset will be available to download for free over at creativedojo.net. Check it out. We also have a lot of other cool, nice presets and useful utilities and scripts and tools and plugins. Um, that will save you a lot of time and money. So check them out over at creativedojo.net. But my name is Vincent and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.